Welcome back everyone. We were last seen making the best of our final evening in Ranomafana, searching for and successfully finding the Baron's Mantella. The following morning, we made our way further down south towards Fianaransu. Join us in today's episode as we hike through a beautiful dry forest that happens to be home to a large troop of ring-tailed lemurs. If we're lucky, we should be able to find and observe them, along with many species of herpetofauna that can also be found living in this unique habitat. For the most part, herping in Madagascar is a breeze. You don't have to get very far before you're already finding an incredible reptile. This snake is a species of ground boa endemic to the island. These animals can easily grow to an average length of six to seven feet. There are heavy bodied snakes that camouflage well over the forest floors, waiting to ambush unsuspecting prey that consists primarily of small mammals, birds, and lizards. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. This, friends, is the Ecranthophis dumarelli, the Dumarel's boa. And our guides here just found this beautiful animal. The pattern is just exquisite. This has been a species that I keep going back and forth about owning. As you know, our good friend Adam has produced some pretty awesome videos explaining to us why these animals should be a lot more popular than they are. I mean, how could you not agree? What a cool snake. One of two genera of boas on the island of Madagascar. We have the Sanzinia, the tree boas, and then we also have Dumeril's boas here. And they are one of two species in the genus. They can get significantly larger. I'm not certain of the sex. Perhaps our other companions might know more than I do. Think about how placid and calm natured this animal is, considering it is very much wild. This is not a pet or anything of the sort. What an honor to be around them. I can't wait to see what other snakes we find on this hike. Looks like a female to me. But also this young, sometimes the spurs don't come up. Like I've always just sexed them with the uh, spurs, mm -hmm. but yeah, looks like a female to me. You heard it here from the expert, everybody. It's beautiful too. So cool. You're pretty. I'm really not sure if I'm gonna not be able to own one of these when we get back. Annalise, if you're watching, you might be hearing from me, friend. Adam, attention, hein? The terrain here is absolutely spectacular. I mean, look at these views. They're breathtaking and out of this world. We continue to move further into the dry forest in search of reptiles. Some of the rocks here were enormous and there were still streams flowing into the rice fields. As we moved through this environment, we had to watch where we were stepping, but we also wanted to look up into the trees in case we'd spot a lemur. Everyone, so we did see that stunning large male Fursifero Saleti on the road there that Dave spotted earlier. Now we have the pleasure of interacting with a really nice female animal right here. And you can see the difference in size and coloration as well. Really cool. Ultimately, I just wanted to give you the opportunity to see, again, female representation of each chameleon species we come across. It's been so special to actually see an individual of each sex for each species. So you have it, the female Fursifer Usuleti, Malagasy giant chameleon. With all those streams we were crossing, it's no surprise that snakes such as this, the lateral water snake, could be found in the area. What a beautiful snake. Okay everybody, we're moving through this forest, the dry forest. We're on our way 
up to a location where we can find Madagascar hissing cockroaches. Cat, if you're watching this, this is for you, my friend. Wild Madagascar hissing cockroaches. Let's go. I didn't want to disturb our little friend here, but it turns out that his preferred basking spot is right where we needed to find the cockroaches. These are the Madagascar hissing cockroaches. Aren't they incredible? Listen to how loud they are. But how does this insect make that sound? Well, by forcing air through a modified pair of spiracles on its abdomen. Spiracles are like air pores that are part of an insect's respiratory system. When they feel threatened or to attract mates and a few other various reasons, they can force air through those spiracles and make different distinct sounds. How cool is that? These cockroaches usually have small little symbiotic mites living on their body. The relationship is mutually beneficial. The mites clean the cockroaches and the cockroaches provide the mites with a sense of security. This here is a female hissing cockroach and this is a large male. If you look closely, you can see that he has these much more pronounced horns on top of his head and his antennae are much longer and a bit more feathery if you will. That's so he can detect females easier and the horns are for him to combat other males for territory and breeding rights. Quite fascinating to see that in the world of insects. So cool to see these animals in the wild. All right, everyone, check out this stunning snake. This is the Sanzinia voluntani, which is another member of the Sanzinia genus. We've already seen one species. Now we have the pleasure of coming across this elegant animal. Look how she's beautifully positioned, perched on this branch in the spiny forest here. I can only imagine when she has the opportunity, she might even be preying on everything from the birds to even some of the ring-tailed lemurs frolicking around in here. This species also gets much much larger than the other one we've seen, so it's really cool to see one this big. The coloration seems a bit lighter, I don't know, the other ones we were looking at were much darker and it has bolder, lighter patterning, so it's so different in its own way, but it has that similar head shape that we've been seeing on other members of the genus. We're really fortunate to have seen as many animals as we have this far into our expedition. Ten more days to go, unbelievable. The Madagascar Expedition is brought to you by Exoterra. Make your reptiles feel at home. Whether it's beautifully designed terrariums for housing your animals, feeding and nutrition, products that nourish your pets and help them find their food easier, substrates and habitat decor that allow you to create the most beautiful naturalistic looking homes for your animals, heating, lighting, and more. Exoterra has a wide selection of innovative products that allow hobbyists to successfully keep their reptiles. Exoterra makes it possible to cater to almost any species from almost any specialized habitat. Thank you again to my friends at Exoterra for sponsoring the expedition of a lifetime. habitat of the ring-tailed lemur. That's lemur kata. King Julian in the flesh. He likes to move it, move it, you know. We're gonna go ahead now and see if we can find a troop of these incredible primates. They live in female matriarchs where one dominant female sort of leads the group. Hopefully we'll get to see these animals up close. But I gotta say, regardless of that, the environment here is so special, it's so unique. The landscape is breathtaking and kind of out of this world even. Look at out there. Oh. At last, we finally found the ring-tailed lemurs. I can't even begin to describe to you how much joy everyone felt observing these animals in their native habitat. Ring-tailed lemurs are referred to as maki by the Malagasy people. This is a diurnal species that is exclusively active during the day. 
Maki are very social primates, living in family groups called troops, and troop sizes for this species usually don't exceed 20 individuals. As we observed the troop of ringtail lemurs, this cheeky little juvenile followed us closely. He hadn't really developed a sense of healthy fear, and he was very curious to try and watch us, and at some points I was convinced he was even going to try and steal my phone out of my hand while I was recording some of them. All right, guys, we've come across a troop of lemurs. We're usually here in this dry forest most of the day. But as the evening comes along, they kind of make their way closer to this small town. The whole troop moves in for security. So we're lucky to come across them and see the whole family in here. We're doing a bit of dining in the evening, eating small leaves that make up a big part of their diet. And only eating fruits, leaves, flowers, things like that. Although ringtail lemurs are quite opportunistic, their favorite food has to be the leaves and fruit of the tamarind tree. When this is available, they feed almost exclusively on this plant. They do, however, sometimes consume small animals for protein, anything from insects to small reptiles. Again, this species is female dominant. They'll work together and are quite friendly towards their gender, even offering to nurse and babysit each other's infants. What a supportive community! Unfortunately, this species is listed as endangered, primarily due to habitat loss and hunting. I don't even know what to say. Like, we are in Madagascar observing ringtail lemurs in the wild. Lemur kata in their natural environment. This is the only place on earth that these animals are endemic to, the only place they exist. It's just crazy to process that we're here. Like, you know, you might get to see them at a zoo, but there's only one place on the planet you can see them in the wild, and that's Madagascar. There they are. Do it, buddy, do it. Yeah, there it is. Being able to interact with this troop of ringtail lemurs has been something out of this world. Yeah, they are sort of used to people, researchers and other folks coming along to observe them, document their behavior, the way they socialize and more. So that's why we can sort of get this close to the animals while they're feeding before sunset. Regardless, this has just been nuts. Alright guys, this is my favorite insect in the world, the praying mantis. If I had to guess, this might be a Sphodromantis species. I'm not 100% sure, but it kind of looks like one. It is an adult female. It's one of two species of mantis we've come across so far in Madagascar. Although Alec did see what appeared to be a Papa species, P-O-P-A. Uh, but he didn't tell me, so I didn't get to see it. But that's a twig mantis. Such elegant animals, you have to love the praying mantis. And there's no shortage of interesting species here in Madagascar. Southeast Madagascar has been visually stunning. Landscapes that I've never seen in my life. Truly as if we were on another planet. We've seen the most incredible wildlife, and now it's time to head back up north towards Andasibe National Park. I couldn't be more excited, and we thanked our friends and said farewell. Time to head out. Well friends, you probably get the idea by now if you've watched the other episodes. You're gonna have to wait and see, but I can't wait to show you what's in store next.